Okay, can you hear me, Dick? Yeah, Dennis. All right. The intercom is voice activated. So, also, if you don't hear yourself speaking, I'll, then I'm not hearing you either. Okay. And when it starts getting a little noisy, there's an automatic thing that blocks out most of the noise unless we're talking. Sure. So. Okay. Sometimes maybe the first part of what you say might get cut out. Okay. All right. Thanks. Just wanted to let you know. Yeah, good. You pilot all? I'm a computer pilot. A computer pilot. You've been doing those uh, computer simulation games? I've been doing the flying computer simulation. Okay. Okay. Reality's new program. Well, uh, flying mostly the Hawker 800, 737s, and 757s. I also fly radio control, and I've been an aviation nut since I was a little kid. Just well, you ought to do fairly well. I find that the radio control guys really do pretty decent. Yeah, uh, I flew from here, uh, about three years ago in a Stearman, just like we're doing today. Okay. Uh, this came down from Waynesville, Ohio. They had a little air show over here, and I took a 15-minute ride in it and just had a blast. Well, then you're sort of familiar with the Texas two-step that I do as I taxi out here. Yeah, I'm, in the, I'm sort of blind exactly when I'm straight ahead, so I sort of turn outside and stick my head out that there. That was one of the most fascinating things to me in the stairman. Is, uh, I was telling my son over there who's going next that uh, when you're taxiing, you can't see. Yeah, sometimes they, people think I've turned it over to the student and, uh, with all this wandering around. Oh. Or sometimes the person up front there thinks I've been drinking, but I just yeah. drink water. Sure. Now I know what you're doing. <laughs> the bad part is on a real cold morning, you stick your face out in that cold breeze. They got frostbite on my nose yesterday. Right. It felt like a little bit. It wasn't quite that cold, but sure felt like it. Yeah. What's the horsepower of this engine? 600 horsepower. That's what I thought. Yeah. Uh -huh. 1,340 cubic inches. Now, this engine actually turns fairly slowly. Uh huh. With it, that prop out there is nine feet long, and when you're swinging it out at the end, it starts going supersonic. That's yeah. what makes all that noise when it takes off. Sure. So it's only turning 2,250 RPM. So we usually bring it back to 2,000. That cuts out a lot of noise. It brings the tip subsonic anyway. Yeah. And a lot of the noise will go away. This one is a. Uh, it started life as an Air Corps airplane, 1943. Uh -huh. And it went through the Air Corps for a while, and then it went overseas for a while and did more pilot training in the foreign air forces. I think it was down in Chile for a while. Yeah. And then it was somewhat recently brought back to the United States as a civilian airplane. We've restored it as a Navy SNJ. Oh. Uh, are you guys from Florida? That's our whole base. Yeah, we're the uh, the other pilot right now. He actually is from Florida, although he's lived in several different places. Yeah, I currently have a farm in Northeast Kansas. Yeah, and Bruce originally was from New York, and he's now living in Florida as well. Yeah, I noticed your Florida license tags when we pulled in. Yeah, that's where the home base is. Yeah, but I only spent three weeks there. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop here at the end, Okay, and I need to do a few checks, make sure I'm ready to go. All right. All right, all our engine instruments are looking good. Got good oil pressure, fuel pressure, transponder and avionics are on. Uh-huh. 
My altimeter, your altimeter is right in front, well, not directly in front of you, a little I, bit to the right. I see. Okay. It. Yeah. It should be about 950 feet, which is altitude above sea level. Yeah. See it? Yep. I see the airspeed. Okay. okay. Watch your knees. I'm going to run through the controls here, huh? make sure they're free. Trip tab set for takeoff. That's sort of a thing that holds controls, makes it easier to fly. We're going to take off on the right hand tank. Your shoulder harness locked? Uh, yeah. You're belted in. I'm belted in good. Your canopy looks like it's good. It's, uh, it's not locked. Should it be? Uh, actually, right there is probably a little better. You okay. get some ventilation. Yeah, you can okay. actually fly with the canopy open. Yeah, okay. Okay, we're ready to go. And there's no control tower here. We have to look on our own. Make sure there's nobody out there. Sure. Sort of like a stop sign instead of a traffic light. Right. Huh. And then I give a holler just in case I miss somebody, let people know we're coming out. Georgetown traffic, Boo Texan departing runway 03. Quite some time. My family lives up in Seattle. 
hydroplane racing is really big up there. So are the back up. Yeah. Now, learning to fly is probably one major thing is remembering where you are geographically. Like, where's the airport? Especially sure. after you've been out for an hour practicing things. Then it says, okay, time to go home. Where do we go? Well, the airport is right off our right hand wing tip. Uh, well, I'll oh, go ahead. The one off the left, that's, uh, what do they call that? Uh, Sydney. Yeah. That's how I was getting ready right to tell you. I know all this territory very well. I'm a UPS driver. Ah, have been for 30 years, and for 20 years, this was my territory. Sydney, Harrison County. You know all these roads really well, then. I know all these farms. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to level off here shortly. We'll turn a little bit to the south. Sure. Get a little warm up. 
Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, you got the airplane. Okay, now, a little bit of back pressure, bring up the nose. Okay. Slowly, slowly, nice and lazy, rolling into the turn. Okay. A little more back pressure. More back pressure. Uh -huh. More back pressure. Uh -huh. Now, the nose isn't coming up any higher, but as it slows down, the air, uh -huh. the uh, controls lose effective, so you have to keep pulling. Okay. All right. Nose down and down, slowly rolling out of the turn. Now the nose start coming back. Finish rolling out of the turn. Keep the nose coming up. Roll, roll a little bit more. Nose still coming up. Everything, you're always moving. No always left. moving. Go back to left. Good. Go. Okay. Okay, stick coming back to neutral. A little bit of back pressure. Keep uh -huh. the nose up. A little back pressure. Now uh -huh. pause a little bit. Just hold the controls right where they are. Uh -huh. Let the nose swing around. The airplane has stability built into it, so if it, the engine should quit and the airplane slows down, it will drop the nose automatically. That's why you don't have to push the nose down. Nice job. Oh, nice. All right, I've got the airplane, but follow me through on the controls. Okay. If we exaggerate that a little bit, and we only do one half, okay, it's called the wing over. So it's a little variation on it. Let me see here, find a nice target. If you look off your left wing tip, there's a couple silver top barns right there. If that was like an enemy aircraft, we want to turn inside him. If we want to get slow, we're going too fast for a nice sharp turn. So we bring up the nose. That slows it down, we can make a steeper turn. And we'll keep an eye on that. We'll bring it on right on around. Wow. Wing it over. <laughs> and we come down and start shooting. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's called a wing over. Really nice. And it's really nice. just a lazy eight, just a little bit sharper. Essentially, all the maneuvers we do are always positive, so you're always being pushed in the seat. Yeah. This airplane was designed for fighter tactics, which are all positive maneuvers. We don't hang upside down by the straps. Yeah. It only has a carburetor, and the carburetor will shut off the fuel if you go upside down. Yeah. And it usually upsets people's stomachs, so it's not good for anybody up front either. Yeah. So we keep everything nice and positive. Sure. Okay, you think you're ready for a roll? Uh, yeah. Okay, sure. Let me take a look out front before I start this. I'm going to line up on that road headed to the east. That gives me a visual reference point. Yeah. For this, we're going to need a little bit extra speed. Okay. So I'm going to lower the nose a little bit, pick up 160 miles an hour. This airplane, the wing is nice and fat, generates lots of lift. Yeah. So I get the nose up pretty high because it's lifting downwards when we're upside down. There's 106 gallons. All right, pitching up. A little bit of G coming up. Yeah. And right here, it's usually easier to go left. I'm going left. Yeah. And stick over. The rudder. Wow. Right on around. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And now wow. we finish it. And pitch up to gain back down to we lost the dive. A little bit different from sitting in front of a computer screen, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. okay, you want to try one yourself? Uh, not a roll. I'll let you do those. Well, I would like to fly some more. All right, you've got the airplane. Okay. You can try a wing over if you like. No, I'll just... Uh, let me do a left turn. Okay, just a little bit of left. It's your airplane. Okay.
much comes back to neutral. Okay. As long as you feel like you're sitting straight up and down, yell. That's, you're, you're doing just fine. If okay. you feel your butt sliding out to one side, that yell. means you're, okay. you're pushing too hard on that side. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna straighten up. All right. Now another maneuver that people often see at air shows and different things is called the loop. Sometimes they call it the barnstormer loop. Go. No. You want to try one of those? Sure. Okay. I'm gonna line up the east and west now. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna do it. Aren't you? I'm gonna do it. Okay. I'll watch. Now, what happens on this one? When the nose comes up, we lose the horizon altogether, which means I can't maintain the attitude. Go. Yeah. So as the nose comes up, when you lose the horizon, I look out my left wing, which is straight out the left wing. Feels a little funny playing with your head cocked sideways. Go. Yeah. But you watch the airplane come up through vertical. As it goes past vertical, now you can look out the top and pick up the horizon coming around. Okay. And it's going to be a 3G pull at the bottom. Okay. All right. I'm fine. So we need to pick up 190 miles an hour. Okay. So I'm going to go down about 45 degrees, nose down. Up there, okay. And keep 
the nose down. I'm going to put a little nose down, Jeff. Give you a little help. Okay.
Could you push the landing gear down for me, please? Yes. Oh, wrong one. Oh, big wheel. Oh, oh like yeah. a big wheel. Sure. There you go. That's the right one. Hi. Okay, I got two green lights. The pointer indicators are all the way forward. Right. Going full flaps. Georgetown traffic, Blue Texan turning left base for zero 03. Mixture is forward, prop is forward, we're ready to go if that guy does something. Uh, we always do these slow turning things to keep that runway in sight all the time. Yeah. is getting it from landing speed down to taxi speed. Yeah. It'll lose your attention for a second. It, it will hit for the bushes like it's got a friend out there. Like maybe that wind is going to try and shift around to the other runway. Georgetown traffic, Bonanza 1561 Golf, taking the active runway 21 for takeoff, Georgetown, Scott County. And the Texans down and clear. The wind always be at your back. Thank you, man. That's my son in that one, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> 